Now, a lot of people ask me from time to time, what is the, the best paying job in plastering? What's the thing that I can do to make the most money? Well, you got your specialist stuff that always seems to pay well, like lime rendering and damp proofing and that sort of stuff. But when it comes to skimming, in my opinion, the best payer is the hand cove ceiling. And that's mainly because a lot of plasterers turn them down. They won't entertain them. You know, maybe they don't feel confident enough to do them. So, in this video, I want to show you step by step what I believe to be the easiest way to skim these ceilings. This is the first ceiling that we're going to get in done. They are sampling it as well. When the screws don't stick on, this is how we have to do it. Roll them on like that. With a bit of SPR and they'll stay put. Okay, so this ceiling's getting done in here as well. There's quite a big crack down here and a hot nail, so I'm going to re screw part of this ceiling to stop any movement. This wall's going to get done, and this wall's going to get done, and this wall is going to be behind wall works. So the master's not to bother with this wall. In fact, someone's going to be here patching up. I'm going to trim in the dark, wasn't us. Uh, we skimmed in there, we skimmed this last time we were in here when this little extension was built. But now the master's doing this for you as well. So, anyway, I'll be getting on this ceiling in here, and uh, one of the walls, and Sam, Sierra Delta, he will be skimming kitchen ceiling, and um, well, I'll probably do that wall, Sam, and we'll do this wall. So, that's the plan. Cal, put your bacon, sausage, and egg, mate. Thank you. I feed the lads. Now yeah. look at this as well. We've got some new SBR. I've never seen this before. Alpha Chem. Right. Sounds like something you should drink before you go to the gym, doesn't it? Hey, I'll put airs on your chest, lad. <laughs> cool. <laughs> new brush not because you won't rot it you won't disappear there we go there we go always take these little things down if you can get them out of the way sometimes on a wire and if you're really unlucky the wire will be that long and it's got to sort of be in the way but if you can take them down and get them out of the way it's definitely better to just make sure that you put it all together and don't lose it now with these ceilings when they come down hand curved ceilings there's a few ways you can finish these and I've done all of them so I'll just briefly go through the main ways that you usually do it you can either put a skim stop bead on the surface of the nib here. That's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is to put a 10 or 15 mil stop bead below the nib and extend the ceiling down to get a nice fresh new line. That's another way. The way my dad used to prefer doing it was he would tack a batten right round the bottom and skim it and form a new nib just with plaster. That's another way of doing it. Now, the fact that this line is nice and smooth really, it's not got artex all over it. I'm just gonna feather into it. I'm just gonna give it a tight skim of the ceiling and just feather into this nib. Now, if this was artex and it was all jagged and bumpy, then I'd probably go with setting a bead underneath it. But the customers were quite keen on keeping it the same height because it matches the other ceilings. So they didn't want to adjust it I don't really like putting skin beads on top of it, I don't think it's very neat. And you still have to patch underneath, and the nature of skin beads, they go a bit wavy. So I don't really like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could spend time getting really tight, but I also know that I'm capable of blending into that nib there and getting that lovely. So that's the way I'm going to do these. Right, today I'm going to be using the new carbon steel. I'm going proper old school with a wooden handle, just like a, 
my dad used to insist on wooden handles. <laughs> my dad used to say to me, there was one, the jaw and stuff handles, he said, they were for girls, because it wouldn't get sags off it. That's something I want to show you as well. Watch how I take the gear off my hawk or my handboard. When there's only a bit of stuff on the board, you can take it off like that out. You know, how everyone was taught to. But when the, when the board's loaded up, if you do that, you'll lose a lot of the bottom. So I take it when it's fully loaded, just like that. I'll show you what I'm doing so you understand what I mean. taking a bit off like that that's fine but if you wanted to really load this up and get maybe four scoops on there and then try to take it off like that watch this now here i'll do this with you can see it all falls out the back door so that way load it up four scoops To get the gear off lock dropping it, you just take it out of that. No problems then. Right, so putting the cove in, the bit that's curved round, that's basically self-explanatory. You've just got to get your hands to follow around that without letting the other side of the trowel dig in. But it's just a bit of practice. The hard bit is the corners. Now in just a second, I'll show you how to do the corners. Putting the cove in is quite basic, you know, you've just got to follow it round. It's these corners that catch a lot of people out, knowing how to get into the corners, and it's just about moving your hand in and out as you go. So if I start at the bottom there, you can only get these on the downward sweep. You want to come up and out, right? But then to get all this, you have to get it on the downward sweep, like, like so. Take them lines out. Never leave juggle lines in if you can help it. Okay, same on the other way, you're going to come up and out, and you're going to fill that in on the downward sweep, like that. And then in the little corner of it there, just load the corner of your trowel up, and come up. Now you're not going to get these looking perfect, until they're almost finished. So as long as you know that beforehand, Coming up here, what a lot of guys struggle with when they first start is they do this and they judder there in the cove. Like I don't judder anymore, so it's not a problem to me. But if you find yourself leaving ripples in the cove there, one little thing that will help you is to come out diagonally like this. So instead of going straight up and out, come diagonal. There's something about that wrist movement that stops you juddering so much. Right, we're getting to another corner now. This one's slightly easier because I haven't got the door below me. So we can just whiz straight down this one now. Without too much hassle. Now, remember what I said, it's these corners that are the most difficult thing about these ceilings to do. Going round the cove is a little bit tricky, but that's not very difficult. You get, you get quite good at that quite quick. It's figuring out how to get these corners looking lovely. 
if you can master this, which you can, it's just a case of practice. I mean, you might already be good at them, I don't know. Maybe you're watching me thinking that you're better than me at doing them, I don't know. But either way, if you can master these, this is where the money is in skimming, in my opinion. If you can get good at doing these, because a lot of plasterers can't do them, then you can charge a lot more money for them. When I first started doing these, I must have been about 16, 17 years old. I never used to get one of these hand coat seals. My dad was like, you do it. And I got quite good at them quite quick. I remember going to the job. I was saying to the lady, oh, these are quite difficult to do, you know. They're one of the, they're one of the most difficult sort of things to skin. Um, sort of trying to show off, you know. And I was telling her how good I was at doing them. And as I'm telling her, I'm putting the plaster in here and I'm saying now, you know, you want to always try and reach back to the centre of the ceiling so you can join up in the middle. And as I'm telling her, she stood there and walked off the end of the dresser. <laughs> I was just lying on the floor with plaster all over my face and then oh. Right, we're going to be travelling up shortly and I'm going to show you the tool that you can use in the corners to make life a lot easier rather than using your trowel. Right, so, we recently skimmed this bit and blended it in, and we could have just blended into it, but for what it's worth, I thought we'll just skim it. We'll just skim it again. So now, to get this sealant on, this is going to stay wet for a while. I'm going to skim this wall, Sam skim that wall. Right, I'm going to speed up a little bit now and get to the good bits because I know you want to see how I finish these corners when we're traveling up. Oh, and if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything, you know, it's free. I put this seal on, I put this wall on, and if you look here, I can leave imprints in the ceiling and it's not sticking to my fingers. So that's how you know it's ready for the second coat. If it was still sticking to my fingers and leaving plaster all over my hands, it's too wet. If you can't easily leave imprints and it's setting too quick, you need to go faster. So that is just right for the second coat now. Nearly second coat in, just like that stuff through, so we have to mix just enough up to either just pull that side of the ceiling down and then um, second coat that wall. Wood jacket, I tell you for um, a brand new trowel, it's doing okay, you know, it's doing okay up to now. I've got the other trowel with me because for any novices that are watching this that don't know, it's almost impossible to do a nice job of a brand new trowel. Plastic trowels get better the older they get, the sharper they get, the better they are, they leave a nice finish. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you'd like me to show you how to get loads more work and earn more money, then click on the link in the description. I've got a sales and marketing course specifically designed for tradesmen. So you're going to get this wall second coated now. Now, oh, for some reason, Bits of this have gone in, look. So, I mean, it's still marketable. Some bits go in faster than others. Don't panic, but you need to work efficiently. I haven't got loads of time for yapping, you know, I need to go over that because I'm going to have hassle smoothing it out when I'm trying up if the second coat dries in that quick, so. I'm just being careful around these sockets because they're still live. We'd love to turn the power off, but loads of times people want to watch the TV, have the radio on or whatever. The customers don't want the electric off. Okay, so we're just giving it a flat in now. 
And I've just done the corner. I'll show you on that one. I've just done the corner again with my trowel. And what I'll do as well, it is possible to just finish the corners just with your trowel. You end up using the toe. Now the only problem with using the toe is when you look down the top of your trowel, it's curved a little bit. Okay? So you can do it if you only use the toe. If you start using the blade again, you'll notice you're making a hollow. Don't worry if this sounds a bit too complicated. I'm going to show you an easier way of doing it when you get to the corners. But you can't do it yet. You've got to wait until you're on the first wet trowel or and then the second wet trowel to polish. Flatten it in, just still use the trowel for now. So I'm going to go around the ceiling now and then on the first wet trowel, I'll show you a different way of getting a nice finished on corners. Okay, so I'm going to get into this corner now with just the trowel. I'll show you what I mean about using the toe. And then, well, yeah, let's just get let's just, a little bit less talking here, okay, a little bit more action. That was what the king said, wasn't it? A little less conversation, a little more action, please. So I'm just coming out as I do, I'm just pulling out as I go, like that, coming back in there. still get a fairly nice finish but it's not the easiest thing to use so if you're just getting into doing these when we do the first trial I'll show you a better way and the other thing remember I said I was going to blend into the bottom of this all you have to do is just keep your brush come along and every time you go around just remember to give it a little brush So if you remember in this section, we'll be skimming over what we'd already patched in at one point, because there was this big steel beam in there when we patched it in. So now, because we've turned a fresh, fresh plaster, it's, it's sucked in, it's pulled in really, really tight, you know? So, so now, that's like dried in faster than the rest of the sealer, because the paint is act like a sealer. So we've got a load of coated SBR on that thing. Because we didn't give the SBR like 24 hours to completely cure, it's still a bit of suction through. You can see like this now, what you've got to do now, in this area, is just let it down a little bit, give it a brush, and you'll be able to bring that back a little bit there. You're just rehydrating the plaster. Are you so teaching? Yeah, we're making a YouTube video. <laughs> I think you're <getting> famous. <laughs> <laughs> So that background plaster has sucked the moisture out of the top plaster. So I'm just putting a bit of moisture back into it again. So, yeah. Enjoy yourself, man. Okay. Let's get over this wall quick. And then we will um, make sure everything's clean. 
cleaned out and washed up. And we're ready for the first trial. Oh, oh look at that. Pretend you didn't see that. Messy up. <laughs> So this is staying nice and wet now. What you sometimes find is you might get a little bit of background suction and the first coat, the first coat will sort of lose its moisture but then the second coat, you know, it's like it's almost as if the walls took as much as it wants to and then it doesn't take any more because this now is just, I mean, well, you know, coming close. Then before I was smacking my hand, I mean, look at that, you know, it's wet with a second coat, so sort of uh, panic stations over. That bit's going to go in a bit fast. And you can see there's a few little tears on it there. But, you know, nothing, nothing we can't handle. The key is with this, with plastic, you just don't panic. The more you panic and flat, the worse things get. You know, if you're worried that it's going to go off too quick, just get it flat, get all the lines out of it. I put a third coat on, and it's not ideal. And yet, I know there's going to be people who come on the video and go, you, you can't put three coats on, it's too heavy, it's too much weight. And the ceiling's been over skimmed, maybe two or three times now. So, there you have it, you know. You can you can have a ceiling skim and there's two coats on it, and then you can re skim a ceiling and there's four coats on it. Is that too much, is it, as well? I remember, uh, I remember saying to me, that it's too much, it's, 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 too, it's too much weight. And the only said was, I'll tell you when it's too much, lad. <laughs> that was his answer to it. <laughs> I'm just going round now with the first wet trial. So in case you're counting these processes, you did it. First coat, second coat, flattened it in, and now we're giving it the first wet trial. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stay out these corners a little bit. I'm just going to quickly get over the ceiling, and then I'm going to come and dress. I'm going to come back and address each corner individually at the end of this this trial. Now, if there was any big lines in the corners, I'll just flatten them in a little bit. So as long as there's no big lines, I'm just gonna just literally whiz past them and just leave them for a second. And we'll come back to them in just a minute. Right, now, these corners, we've just been around everywhere. I'll show you that. Easiest ways to get a nice job on these corners. Make sure you don't go through the floor. So what you want to do? Stand at the corner and look 45 and imagine a line coming out across the ceiling. Okay? And you've got to keep that square on with that wall or square on with that wall, but follow that diagonal line. So I I'm gonna draw, I'm, I mean I wouldn't normally do this, but can you see there those you want to come up behind me? Or come behind me? So imagine that comes up there, it's gonna basically come out like that direction, okay? So I've, I wouldn't normally draw that on, but I'm doing this just to show you. Now what you want to do is put a little bit of stuff on your spatula. You can get these from Amazon for about three or four quid, by the way. Plastic spatulas, plastic scrapers they call them. And I'm just going to follow that line and come down there. And the same going up. 
following that line and coming down in the corner. And then you can smear the stuff around a little bit until you're happy with the corner. And then the same for the other side. Make sure you keep that square along with that wall and just come in. Now, if you wanted a bit more control as well, you can literally use your hands on it. Now, the original tool would have been a joint rule, which is like a piece of metal, goes to a point, it's got a blade on the bottom of it, and that's how they used to build up the edges of cornice. You see, like, that fancy old buildings. <laughs> We're using a similar principle, we're just using a piece of plastic to do it instead. And that's it. Now I'm going to quickly do this around all four corners. That's not perfect yet. But each time we go around with this, it will get slightly better and slightly better each time. So we'll be going again on the second wet trowel. I'll potentially give it another one and then it'll be getting a polish. Change your mind on the tires. Captain Hansen, I'll let you change it. What are you changing? The tires. Now, what I'm doing is I'm doing this one with my trowel because when I was learning, my old fellow would never let me do them with anything but the trowel. He wanted me to use this and just be proficient with just the trowel. And as well, no doubt, there'll be fellas on here going, look, he, he, he's cheating, he's using his little plastic spatula. So I'm just showing you. If you can do it with the trowel as well, it's easier to do it with the spatula, but if you wanted to learn a way so you have to rely on a little bit to kit, you can just do it with the trowel. You just going to use the same principle, visualise the imaginary line, and then just follow it in. Trying not to dig into the other angle. showing through there, a little bit of white. There's no holes as such. It's just that a little high spot in the in the old plaster. Don't worry about that too much yet, we'll deal with that in a bit. What you're trying to make sure now is that you haven't got a crease in the corner here for using the toe. You can sometimes get a little crease there, so, so you're guiding that round with your hand to help it, or your hand to help it, to, to push that crease out and to fill it with any stuff. Okay, just brushing this down because we're this the second wet trowel. And you can see it's starting to get dark patches around the, the edges where it's feathered in. That's because it's on so thin, it's starting to set in those areas. And obviously there's been like a bump in the old seals that's on thin there. But this is so you know you're getting close to the end now because you're getting a little bit setting. I'll give this the second wet. Again, I'm just setting slightly out the corners. I'm going to use the same process again. Now, it is hanging a little bit in the middle. This is still fairly wet. So I might not get away with just giving it two wet trials and a polish. It might need another trial, which is fine. Basically, two coats Flatten in and two wet trials and a polish is the minimum that I can get away with doing. That's the minimum to leave a lovely job. Some fellas don't do a polish, you know, they just give it um, a flat and the two wet trials and it's done. I always prefer to go over it that extra time. And sometimes you can go over it more. It's not going to do any harm if I went over it three more times. It's only bad if you don't go over it enough. 
time. So, like I say, I'll give it the second wet try on now. And then that might not be ready for the polish and it might need another one. So, we'll just see. Right now, everywhere's had the second wet trial, so now it's going in. Finishing the corners with this. Now, come in here, I want to show you something. What you'll find is when the two angles intersect, you end up digging out either side of it. But once you've done this, the stuff that you're taking off here is good. So just filling that section up in there. Can't leave it like that. You've got to just finish it off with this. Another pass or so again. There we go. This is how we start to finish the internal angle uh, off now. Kirk? Yes, love? Did she say somebody else was coming to do the bathroom? Yes, she did, love, yeah. There we go. The lady and gentleman that we're working for, they've gone out now to pick some tiles for the bathroom. So whilst they're gone, the neighbours come to make sure we're okay because there's another guy coming who's going to go in here. In, in, in this room behind here and do the... Uh, they're having like UPVC cladding on the ensuite ceiling, so that lady's just getting on with the plan because she didn't know if she had to stay here for us or stay for the next guy as well. But he's coming today, so. And this is just the same again. Any little bit that you take off there, just use that to smear into the angle and just check that the angle is full, you know, when you put your spatula, come, come right in here, what you want to make sure is when you put your spatula right in, that there's no gap in there, you know, you don't want any hollow bits either, and if there is, just work on taking a little bit more out, you know, and filling it up a bit more and cutting it square. Just taking your time to make sure these are the, these, you know, look at me, look at me. These bits in the corners are what really set it off, you know. Most monsters can get the seam smooth. Most fellas can get a curve. It's the corners that will really separate you from other plasters if you can get those really nice. And it's not difficult, it's just a case of hitting them at the right time. And if you can use things to make your life easier, that's fine as well. Now this next corner, I'm not bothering, gonna, I'm not going to use this. Because we've used the trowel all the way through, just to show you the difference that it can be done with the trowel. So, we'll just go back to the trowel. Now, this doesn't help, because this trowel is brand new. I did take the edges off it last night, and I have put a bit of an edge on it. But even still, the fact it's brand new makes it not the easiest thing to use. See that proud white plaster there? That's the background showing through. That's not holes, that's just because the one corner I decided to pick to do with which trowel had a bit of a bump already in the background, so that's why that's showing through. But as soon as you do this, you know. Give me another flavour. <laughs> never ever tell my old fella, because he doesn't watch YouTube, never tell him that Kirk Johnstone used his finger to finish the angles. <laughs> he 
he'll go flipping nuts. Especially if I'm showing people that I'm doing it as well. Oh, flipping it, that'll be the end of me. <laughs> I'll be grounded for a month. So now all we're going to do now is give this a polish. Now I still think that this is hanging a little bit here, so I'll probably give it a polish, polish the wall, and then just give the centre of this just another polish as well, just to make sure, you know, just to make sure it's coming down. It looks like it's staying just a bit wetter than the angles. I always get moaned at for all sorts of safety issues like seat belts and guards on grinders and dust masks and all sorts. There's my next one for you. But don't do this. Like, don't take a metal small tool and stick it in where there's live match picks. Just turn the power off. All right, unless you nuts like me and you don't care. But either way, now is the time you want to clean your boxes out. Okay, our lovely friends. Well, if we friends, the elect chickens like it if you don't leave their back boxes full plaster. So, whilst it's still soft, it's a lot easier to clean it out now than let it set. Yeah, zoom in down here so you can see. See, like that. Nice and cleaned out. Okay, so go to this one. Of that plastic set in the past on this one. There you go. Yeah, just make sure, be careful, you don't start, you know, sticking your metal tool in, in there because you'll end up with curly hair. Look at that, beautiful. That's it now, it's the final polish. That is blended in seamlessly. Lovely. Oh, nice and smooth. It's times like these where you go right quick though. You go quick and you dig it. <laughs> and now I'm conscious of it because you're watching, I'm probably doing it. I won't. I've only got about a thousand of these scenes. Now I'll tell you something interesting as well. With these hand turn ceilings, they're not just like your standard flat ceiling. You can actually charge a lot more for these, so it is worth getting quite good at doing them. I mean, unless you're already good at doing them more. But if you're sort of getting into plastering and you're trying to get better, I'd recommend that you're definitely practicing these ceilings. They're literally worth twice as much as a standard ceiling. So. And it's, you know, if you're good, it basically feels like no extra effort, you know. I spent years practicing and learning sales and marketing skills. And I took all those skills and condensed them into a nice little step-by-step -step course to show you how to get lots of jobs like this and how to charge the most for them so you get plenty of work and plenty of money. Now, not only that, this system doesn't just work for plasterers, it works for any tradesman. So if you're a tradesman and you'd like more work and you'd like to earn more money, click on the link in the description. Let's get on the phone and have a little chat and see how I can help you. That's it. Oh, and the lady, the lady that we're working for, um, no, the lady that's looking after the house wants a car, so we're going to give her a car. And that's it, we're done for the day.